Okay guys, so this is the one I really, really, really want to talk about. This is the one that made me want to do the Goosebumps books in general. And also, it's my favorite book of the entire series. It's only the third book in the series, but it's my favorite. Um, so it's only down here from, hill from here, guys. Uh, but of course, the third book in the Goosebumps series is Monster Blood. My favorite one. Okay, so, premise. Uh, this, um... This kid is staying with this crazy aunt, and his name is Evan, the kid. And his crazy aunt is Catherine. She's this really weird, eccentric, deaf lady, you know. And he's staying in this big, creepy old house with her. And, um, he's, you know, he's staying for the summer because his parents recently have moved, and they're trying to get settled into their new job and a new place. So Evan is sent to stay with Aunt Catherine. Evan is less than enthusiastic about this, but he decides to try to make the best of it. And so, when he's hanging out, walking around town, he meets a girl named Andy. Him and Andy become really close friends, like, pretty right off the bat. And, um, Andy's, like, my favorite character in all of Goosebumps, so, like, she's a delight. She's, a she's just kind of, like, quirky, like, smart-assy, like, sarcastic, but genuinely nice girl that is kind of, like, the best friend you'd always want to have. And, like, I feel like a lot of kids reading that was like, oh, man, I wish I had an Andy in my life. Uh, the two of them find this old, like, uh, like, secondhand toy store, and they find this thing called Monster Blood. It's like a jar, or no, it's like a jar, it's like a can. It's like a tin can of this, like, green gloop. Well, Andy and Evan mess around with it, and they notice it's really bouncy, but then the problems start because it starts growing and growing and growing. This shit becomes incredibly hard to maintain. Like, they put it in a bucket, it overflows a bucket. You know, he puts it in a fucking bathtub and it starts overflowing. It's just like this green, slimy, gelatinous mass, and it just keeps expanding. And, um, <laughs> and the, uh, this leads to, like, one of the weirdest endings for the a book in this series, and it turns out that uh, Catherine, not his aunt Catherine, not only knows about monster blood, uh, it was created by this evil witch who had stayed with her, and the evil witch takes on the form of a cat. And at the end of it, there's this confrontation where the evil witch is swept away by the wave of monster blood, <laughs> and this green wave of mutilation, like takes her out, and, um, it kind of ends on a pretty much happily ever after kind of note, like, um, it ends with that, you know, the, the evil being gone, and how this evil gelatinous mass thing, uh, saves the day, pretty much, and, uh, it, you know, it implies, like, you know, um, uh, you know, Evan and Andy are friends now, and Evan's like, I'll see you around, and Andy's like, I'll see you around, and, but we'll always have this bonding over this horrid, monstrous goo. <laughs> I I don't know. I, the thing that makes me like this one the most is the characters. Evan's a likable and relatable protagonist. Andy is a delight. She's just a great character. And I kind of just like the premise of like the of a kid having to stay the summer with this like eccentric deaf aunt who's kind of a killjoy, not very fun, but making a friend along the way. And also, I like the villain this monster blood is kind of portrayed as the antagonist even though it's not a sentient being it's just kind of this shit that just keeps growing and growing and and it causes anything that it comes into contact with grow like evan's dog eats some and it grows to the size of a fucking house um i think that happens in this one in this book um uh, there's a few other sequels to this one and i think in this one like his dog is the one that eats it uh, people consuming monster blood, or creatures consuming monster blood, becomes a running thing in the sequels to this one. And yes, there are sequel books in the Goosebumps series, so not each one is a standalone. Some of them are continuations of previous stories. But I'll get into those when I get into those. So that's it for this one. Um, I just surprisingly didn't have as much to say on it as I thought I would. Just that it's my favorite. I think it's the most well written. I like the premise the most. And I love the characters. Evan and Andy are for the win. They are like the, the protagonist of Goosebumps. And all the Monster Blood books in uh, the series mo blows away any of the other characters and stories in the Goosebumps series. So that's it for this one. Um, 
I figured I'd have a lot more to say on it, but I guess I didn't. But it was it's just cool to talk about. And uh, if you guys don't read any of the Goosebumps books, please read Monster Blood. At least read that one. Check it out. It is easily available. You can find it on bookstores, on eBay, on Amazon, on Bonanza, on Wish. You can find it on any site that sells books. Just pick it up. It's really cheap, doesn't cost much, and it's a great read. And like all of them, you can read them in like 30 minutes to an hour. They're really short books. So anyways, check out Monster Blood. Um, and I'll be back at the next one, uh, which will be Say Cheese and Die. So until then, I will see you guys later. Bye.